Hello, and welcome back, you lovely person, you. Glad to see you back around in these parts. I got another video for you today. Uh, we're gonna be exploring a fun new technology that's been out for a couple of weeks now, but I figured it was time for us to kind of get our fingers dirty by testing it out. Uh, to this week, we're gonna play around this thing called Framer Motion, uh, which is nothing to do about picture frames, uh, picture frames in motion. My son loves to knock these things off the walls and it drives me up the wall to get it back. Uh, well, he knocks it down, but if I'm being driven up the wall, then I guess I, whatever. Uh, Framer Motion is a open source React library to power production ready animations. It's essentially a library to make it drop dead simple for you to make your React applications animate like me. Am I animated? I'm a little dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna play around with it, not gonna go too deep into it. I just wanna kind of expose you to it so that you know that it's out there and kind of show you uh, how easy or hard, depending upon your point of view, it is to use these things. Uh, should I talk about it more or should I just show you the code? Uh, I guess code it is. Uh, this is the website for Framer Motion. It's from the company Framer, uh, which is a, uh, mostly a designer tool. Uh, it, it's kind of like similar to Sketch is the best way to describe it, but it's trying to kind of bridge the world between uh, designers and UI engineers to make it so that when a designer makes something, you can kind of easily pull it to the actual implementation on the page. Uh, Framer Motion is kind of like their, uh, one of the pieces of the puzzle to make that happen. So when you make a Framer animation, you can use Framer Motion to make that thing that works. Um, this is their website, nice and pretty and kind of show you uh, how things can be used, scaling things up, nice animation. My laptop's a little bit laggy, but let's not mind that. Uh, events and gestures. Oh, that is just a lot of, oh, that's a lot of information, isn't it? Uh, try it now in Framer X. No, I just want to play with the library. It's open source, I just want to play with it. So uh, uh, let's, let's uh, get started, both you and me, together we be. Um, so what I've done so far is I have the, I'm going to be jumping back and forth because I am not a uh, whiz when it comes to this, but I'm definitely a novice. <laughs> uh, I have a little React application over here that we're going to be playing around with uh, for motion to kind of see what that looks like. Um, is there going to be a better way for me to show you this? Let's actually make this move over there and then we can have this be over there and maybe you can even like squeeze this over a little bit more to get a little bit more space into here. Uh, cool. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is kind of show, uh, I've already installed Framer and the first thing that I want to do is actually import it. So quick start, uh, I'm going to copy and paste this and, uh, the API for Framer is interesting because it exposes this top level motion component that has, uh, as they say in the documentation, it has every, uh, HTML and SVG element is, uh, ready to be animated. So uh, I'm going to make a motion.div. Uh, I don't, I can just close it. And uh, you actually, I'm not really sure what they think about this, but you can use uh, the style prop on a motion element is actually special. Um, it's built to be animated. Uh, I think you can also probably use CSS if you wanted to. I'm just going to use the inline styles. So I'm going to have it be with a hundred uh, height, I'm actually make it 200. Um, I'm gonna have it be a background, background of black. So there's my wonderful, wonderful rectangle zero auto. Cool, centered, my eyes are happy. Let's make this a little bit bigger for my own sake. So what's interesting is that the first thing that I can do is when this is mounted, I can tell it where to animate to with this animation property. Uh, so what I'm going to say first, oh, let's go back to introduction because that's where they have some nice examples for me. Uh, I'm going to actually animate this down by 100 pixels. This is X, but I actually want to make this animate down. So I'm going to have this be uh, Y, and this is going to go down. So I go here. Well, did you see that? It's going down, going down, and. Actually, I can just start going from here if I wanted to. I can actually say um, uh, x spot set x spot equals u state, and we're gonna have it default to zero. And I'm gonna get a little button action on here. 
I'm going to say do it because I'm very clever with my text. And in here, I'm going to have the uh, do it. Where is it? Set X spot. Set X spot. I'm going to say um, uh, X spot equal to zero. Then I want it to be uh, 100. Otherwise, I'm going to set it back to zero. And then I'm going to set this to the X spot. And I don't know why I called it the X spot because I'm modifying the Y spot, which is horribly confusing. So let's rename that so I don't uh, kill myself later. Uh, let's rename this to set Y spot, Y spot, uh, X spot. This is going to be Y spot. So now when I say do it, look at that. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. It's animating. I'm already, I'm already getting some things to do it. That's cool. Um, I can actually make things draggable. That's fun. So I can say uh, drag is another prop that just kind of just adds behavior. So now with this drag X, I can now drag it left and right. I can't drag it up and down because I didn't set that. If I wanted to, I could say Y to do up and down dragging. Uh, whoa, let's do it. That's being animated there so I can kind of move it around. And then also what I could do is I can just say uh, drag true. I think that lets me drag it anywhere I want anywhere in the world and it's just kind of coasting whoa where'd it go i don't know where it went i don't need it to be back anymore go away just want to do this this is a little bit cramped for my taste let's do a little bit fancy fancy break lines cool i this is nice though i could do drags and have constraints because right now it was that was that was just insane the amount of things that i could do there so i'm going to say uh uh drag x and then the drag constraints is going to be uh, left negative 100 and then right 100. Yeah, that works for me. I'm okay with that. So now I can do this. I can try to drag it outside. I'll actually make this a little bit smaller. Let's do um, 40. So you can kind of see it. So you can see I'm trying to do that and there's this like friction that you can actually control this like elasticity if I wanted to, um, which is very nice. Uh, variance is a way to actually control multiple things. I'm not going to go into that right now. It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, cool. Uh, what else is there? Topics, quick start. Already did that. Animation. Uh, I can have things hide and, and go in. Uh, I, I wish I could talk to you right now because I'm curious what you'd be interested in playing around with. Uh, what other animations are there? Um, one thing that I also found was really neat is like I wanted to have things kind of, uh, so variance is a way for you to control uh, set animations if you want to. You can kind of animate to them. Um, so you can see here this is a variance. Uh, by default, it's the hidden variant, opacity zero, and then if you uh, animate to visible. So you can kind of have labels for the animations that you want to do. It's just a nicer way to maintain things. Um, what's also fun is, uh, gestures I talked about. Um, I think there was a thing that I wanted to show about animating it in uh, animations. I have a lot of examples in here. Uh, there's this thing that I saw though, this this motion. So I actually wanted to have this really cool animation. Uh, where was it? Is it in utilities? It was in utilities. Okay. Uh, there's this thing called use cycle. And this is a way for you to kind of easily cycle through visual properties, uh, which you could do yourself. And this kind of just makes it easier for you to do yourself. Uh, so I can go into here use cycle and I'm going to say um, uh, position I'm going to say uh, cycle position and then what you can provide use cycle is uh, a splat of values that when you call this cycle position function it kind of works like use state it'll go through that so the initial one that I wanted to do uh, with my with here I want it to go to the right Hundred, so I'm gonna say um, uh, we're gonna do x one hundred y zero. Oops. Then we're gonna do uh, we want to go down, so we're gonna do y negative one hundred, but x zero. And then we're gonna do uh, x negative. Well, I want it to be uh, y zero, but x negative 100. I have no idea if you follow that, but I'm gonna take this position and have this be uh, 
here, replace that. Then we're going to do cycle position in here, and replace that in here. So now, if I save this, it's going to call cycle position when I do it. Oh man, I always make that mistake. I actually want it to go down. Cool. This to there, to there, to there. So I click it, and it's animating everywhere that I want it to go. Just cycling through those positions. X100, 0, 0, Y0. Look at that. Kind of cycling through. If I wanted to have a little uh, side trip tour, like a tour, I could do that. Uh, it also has built-in support for gestures. So what's kind of cool is um, uh, animation helpers while hover, while uh, tap. Uh, where was this example that I wanted to do? Uh, topics while, here we go, while hover, while tap. I'm actually gonna change this button into a uh, motion button. So all of a sudden, if, if I want to animate it, I could. But what I'm gonna do is add these two props. So while I'm hovering over this butter, I'm gonna, butter. While I'm hovering over this button, I'm gonna scale it to 1.1, and while I'm tapping, it's gonna scale it to 0 0.9. So it looks like this, oops, there, like that. Look at that. Just, just three changes and now I have this lovely little life on my website. So we'll add a little bit of, of style to it. Um, this is a whole gesture section for hovering. I could do other things if I wanted to. Tap, pan, before I talk about those things. Um, this frame of motion also has like kind of lower level primitives. Uh, we actually have more concrete control over what you want to do with it. There's a whole an an examples page where you can kind of see keyframes so you can actually have this whole animation going for you. It, it It's at its base a simple library and it tries to do most of the things that you'd want it to do for you easily. So uh, if you want to just, this, this is a really cool one. I, I don't know how this is the case for it, but like that's that's just the coolest animation there. Gesture animations. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a very, very cool library, one that you could probably spend a lot of time on. I tried to use it in my own uh, uh, application, but I was using, it doesn't seem like you can wrap your custom components. It's only what the motion library provides itself, like the HTML SVG elements, which you can definitely do a lot, but I would have to rethink how I made my application after the fact. But if you are considering it while you're starting, uh, definitely a, uh, look at that, look at this. That is, that is very cool. Not too much lines of code. So that's a little tour of Framer Motion. Get to kind of get you thinking about what you could do with it if you want to actually play around with it. Very powerful tool. Uh, that's one of the things in my career that I wish I had spent more time learning how to be better at, which is animations. It's a whole field of knowledge that I am just so not an expert in. But having these types of libraries make it easy for me to get my foot into the door and kind of understand what's going on there because it kind of abstracts away all the complexities that I would otherwise have to deal with. So uh, I'd be curious to hear if you have used uh, Framer in the past or if you've used any other animation library with React and what your thoughts are on it. I know there's Spring, which people love as well, which I, I maybe I could do a video about that as well. Uh, but I'd be curious to hear, like, how, what, do you animate your applications? Do you, do you want to animate your applications or you don't have time to do it, you don't know how to do it. Uh, what is your relationship to animation? I think it's the question I'm trying to get at. Be curious to hear your thoughts. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, please become one. These videos are for your enjoyment. If you enjoy them, then you want to have more of them. And that's your chance to subscribe and let me enjoy you every week. That came out wrong. Uh, if you're not, if you also really enjoy these videos, man, I'm saying that way too often. I become a Patreon subscriber and uh, be a patron of my patronage or your your patronage of me. Be much appreciated. Uh, tell everyone that you enjoy these episodes. Tell your water bottle it keeps you nice and that was risky. Uh, and I will see you again next week with a brand new video and my face and a laptop and this information. Bye.